What's going on there, guys? Good evening. It is your Earthmaster here on this Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 date. It is about 10.52 p.m. Central Time here in Texas along the Gulf Coast. And uh, looking at the latest earthquake activity here, a 6.5 earthquake coming in to the uh, South Sandwich Fracture Zone area. Uh, now we've got the trench up here. The South Sandwich Trench, where we've seen that eight-pointer last year, and quite a few other quakes in the mix there since then. Uh, we've seen this, just got this 6.5 coming in here to the east of that region, roughly about 150 miles or so along the uh, plate boundary here. I believe this is a divergent boundary in between the South American plate here and the Antarctica plate. I know we have been seeing quite a bit of movement up here in the northern mid-Atlantic. Uh, that could have something to do with tonight's update or with tonight's uh, earthquake there uh, in the uh, South Sandwich uh, Fracture Zone area. So uh, things definitely uh, kicking up there in the uh, South Sandwich Fracture Zone. Now it's uh, not a whole lot of info on it. Uh, most of the activity we have seen has been confined here to the uh, trench area, the subduction zone. Um, let me see if I can pull up the last 30 days of 4.5 and above. And this is just some of the activity we've seen over the last 30 days or so. It's uh, definitely been ramping up. And uh, aftershock activity can continue here uh, for months and years to come. Again, this area has seen an 8.1 uh, 8 last year. It's a pretty big earthquake. And uh, it's been pretty active far as the entire length of the South Sandwich Trench since then. Looks like we did have low activity here, uh, a little bit further to the northeast um, from the 6.5 that we just seen tonight. Uh, these two earthquakes kicking up here. It looks like, uh, let me pull up where these are at. It uh, looks like it was a 5.0 and a 4.6 back on the 12th of this month. Uh, so a little activity, but again, most of this movement confined to the trench area. So there's a whole lot of something going on here with the um, the Atlantic Ocean right now, um, far as the activity up north and now movement down into the south. Let's go ahead and check out the activity that's been kicking up um, around the uh, Rick Jane's Ridge. This is a divergent boundary up here, a separation of the seafloor. i got a fracture zone that just sits here to the south. That's out there in the oceanic crest. Uh, looks like 14 earthquakes over the last 24 hours. And if we bring up the um, last seven days, uh, that's a total number of 63 earthquakes confined to this area. Um, that's a lot. It's been roughly about uh, 20 earthquakes or so per day sometimes more than others. And the largest so far in this um, cluster uh, has been a 5.8. And that was a couple days ago there on the 26th. So a whole lot of uh, movement going on out there with the divergent boundaries throughout the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, I think if anything, those should add further, that should add further strain out there along the North American plate the South America region as well. Remember these plates kind of separate here in this area. The uh, plate movement uh, kind of gives you that indication right here or the, uh, this little diagram where we're seeing the earthquake swarm. There's the uh, two arrows pointing away from each other. That's a divergent boundary. And uh, in general, that should add further strain over here towards the Eurasia plate uh, and also uh, over here along the North American plate. Now, the movement we're seeing today uh, down south there along that fracture zone should increase activity up along the South American plate, South America region, and perhaps the, um, the Nazca plate uh, where the uh, Peru-Chile Trench is. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on those specific areas. Definitely uh, seeing an uptick in earthquake activity today. Uh, looking out at the, uh, the Leeward Islands area, seeing a 5.0. This one coming in, it looks like earlier this morning time frame. Been pretty busy the last couple of days here, folks. I'm on location out here uh, in Texas on, along the Gulf Coast right now. And um, just trying to get these earthquake updates in as well. And uh, haven't been making them super lengthy, but 
but uh, we're trying to cover as much as we can with the uh, data and whatnot that we have here uh, while we're on location. So some movement there around the uh, Caribbean plate, around the Leeward Islands, once again, low 5.0. And looking at the rest of the magnitudes here around the Puerto Rico area, looks uh, pretty small. There's not a whole lot going on there uh, far as the earthquake swarm goes in the southwest edge of Puerto Rico. Um, over here along the Pacific Plate and the Cocos Plate here. This is a uh, divergent boundary out here. Let me show you guys real quick. You got the uh, Nazca Plate, which sits down south here of the Cocos Plate, and it's not quite showing it here on this level, but for the most part, those are um, a divergent boundary out there uh, where this earthquake struck in this region, 5.5 uh, in the northern East Pacific rise. Uh, that one coming in looks like earlier this afternoon time frame as well. Uh, West Coast area, we are lighting up a little bit, looks like, along the uh, California area. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Let's bring up the uh, 2.5 and above map. Looks like a little bit of movement around the um, Nevada area right now near Mina. And some activity earlier around the Bay area, 3.4 kicking off there uh, earlier this morning time frame. So most of these earthquakes that you're seeing here on the map are indeed microquake activity. And uh, there's a little bit, uh, not a whole lot going on around the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. And um, looks like most of the activity up here to the Hayward and the Calaveras Fault Zone uh, tonight. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a little bit of activity kicking up there tonight as well. Let's bring that up here, see if I can... Uh, uh, here we go. See if this computer picks it up as a uh, hazard or a, a potential hazard. It looks clear. My, my This computer plays it no problem as far as this website goes. But uh, my computer at home uh, tells me that there's something fishy about this site. Um, but they do have quite a few graphs, and it could just be their certificate has expired. Uh, earthquake activity looks like some microquake movement there uh, throughout the Yellowstone area. Uh, there is the 6.2, uh, the signature there from the, or 6.5, excuse me. Uh, I believe that originally came in as a 6.2 down there in the South Sandwich um, Fracture Zone area. Uh, I'm kind of working here on my laptop, so bear with me. Um, I forgot my mouse at home, so that's kind of a, a bad deal for me because I'm having to use my fingers here to navigate across the screen. So yeah, 6.5, and what we're seeing there in the Yellowstone seismograph stations there is that signature from that 6.5. Uh, pretty pretty good size earthquake down there. Um, it's probably the bigger one that we've seen in a little while down there. Uh, again, they had an eight pointer, and a, I think they had a couple sevens in there as well last year. All right, let's see what else we got here for um, earthquake activity around the map. Uh, looks like some movement up through Alaska. A little bit of activity around the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. And uh, looks like we're getting some filling in of those seismic gap zones around the Fiji area, 5.4, uh, near the uh, Loyalty Islands area. And also up around the Vanuatu area. I've seen a couple fives today. Let's go ahead and zoom in here to the Big Island, uh, where we've been watching a swarm of movement out there around the Pahala area. Uh, looking like, uh, it's, what do we got for a, a tally tonight? I'm very tired, folks. i just uh, extremely tired. I'm literally working on, um, when was the last time I had some sleep? Probably about 48 hours ago. It just, that's how it's worked out. Um, I can't sleep when I take trips. So um, it was up all night for me and Missy Mimi's. Missy Mimi's is still running on a, uh, uh, about as much sleep as I have had over the last couple days, and that's very minimal at best. So tonight is going to be a good night. Uh, we're all cozy along the Gulf Coast. Just took a little swim out there in the dark waters. Um, some pretty rough waves kicking up right now. And I'm sure the uh, hurricane much further east of here uh, is kind of churning up those shallow waters in the Gulf and uh, kicking them over here towards the Texas area. But uh, either way, it felt pretty nice, except for the salt in the eye. But uh, that's all been taken care of. Uh, the Pahala area, getting in on some movement, uh, as mentioned. 
nothing within the last hour and no major um, adjustments or uh, eruptive stages there from the volcanoes except for of course Kilauea uh, volcano where that's still continuing to do its thing uh, let's go ahead and check out the tremor map tonight uh, I'm just going to be kind of brief on these updates here over the next few nights just because of data and also on the um, um, on the computer that I'm on here so it looks like we got about 79 epicenters of tremor along the Cascadia subduction zone still within the area that we've seen here over the last 10 days or so and that's been confined here to the uh, uh, northern Oregon and the uh, looks like the southern coastal range of Oregon been uh, under the gun there with quite a bit of tremor recently uh, let's see what else we got let's go ahead and do a quick check of the solar weather um, Hurricane Ian uh, has uh, I believe that's weakening a little bit now it did quite a bit of damage um, through the um, area of Florida Quite a bit of a uh, scary video of some flooding and uh, uh, some damage to some homes and of course lots of trees down and uh, have not heard anything on fatalities which is um, uh, have you heard anything sir uh, nothing, yet. nothing yet so that's probably the a couple injuries yeah so there was some tornado activity before the hurricane came on shore, but uh, haven't heard of any fatalities, but uh, we'll wait for the news to report back on that. Uh, space weather activity, there is the coronal hole, which is now facing us uh, in the latest imagery. There's two separate holes here. And um, uh, I think both of them are gonna give us a pretty good shot of some three day or uh, some geomagnetic unrest here in the coming days which should enhance the three-day forecast. Those are the darker regions here. This is a solar wind flowing um, from the sun, some very uh, charged particles, very high wind stream as well. And um, it looks like that's aiming right at Earth. And it is going to be kicking up a G1 to potential G2 class storm here uh, on the September 30th. October 1st time frame so watch for that again that is coming from a pair of coronal holes uh, stretching across the center of the solar disk and it uh, looks like they're forecasting a G2 class storm so we'll see if that um, comes to pass or not either way a little bit of exciting activity compared to very minimal solar activity here over the last few days solar flare activity is a dying threat right now there's not a whole lot uh, of solar flare activity potential at all uh, there's sunspots on the sun as expected during a uh, solar maximum but they're not doing anything that I would consider fancy or uh, <laughs> at least writing uh, home to grandma about because this is just pretty wimpy in my book far as solar flare activity goes uh, so we'll hope and uh, keep our fingers crossed here for uh, maybe the next uh, couple of sunspots that may be forming around the uh, eastern limb. All right, guys, have a good night. Again, we will chat you guys a little bit later on. And um, take care out there. Uh, we're out here along the uh, Gulf Coast of Texas, and we'll be here uh, if any updates uh, need to be made. But uh, we are going to enjoy a little bit of R&R. &R. We don't get to all that often, so that's why we are out here enjoying a little bit of relaxation time which i think everyone uh, is entitled to so have a good night folks we'll catch you a little bit later on peace out